大大わざーバフ飲んじゃったっくりバフォリーでおい In spirit with Bushido, the samurai code, I must be calm and level headed at all times. Why are you in your bathrobe, Adam? This is a film studio, not your mom's house, dude. You have obviously forgotten about the Akira Kurosawa episode. I'm confused. I am dressed in the ancient, traditional garb of the samurai warrior in order to pay tribute to the farm saving heroes of Shinchinin no Samurai. As always, Buff, your obliviousness is astounding. No, your obliviousness is astounding. I've been here a full minute, and you still haven't acknowledged my awesome ninja outfit. Ninja outfit? Buff, what are you ta- Oh. <laughs> but, but seriously, put some clothes on. On today's close up, we're taking a look at one of the grand masters of filmmaking, the legendary Akira Kurosawa. His films were gruesome and bloody, with complex and jaded heroes dealing with crushing poverty. His films often had a serene look and contained historical and spiritual themes with graceful women and beautiful landscapes. With the wonderful way Kurosawa presented the feudal, Edo, and post industrial eras in Japan, it's no wonder that many of the world's leading camera companies are Japanese. Oh snap. Kodak, are you listening to this right now? Kurosawa grew up in the urban Kanto region of Japan and was a natural painter and storyteller right out of the gate. While traditional Japanese morals promote dignity and being reserved, Kurosawa's emotions jumped out of him. He was known as a perfectionist, eccentric, famously tearing down movie sets because the screws that the construction crews were using didn't match the film's time period. In fact, the finale of his film Run could only be filmed once because the set that was built was literally set on fire. His biggest inspiration growing up was his brother Haigo, who was another Kurosawa who wore his heart on his sleeve. Equally gifted, Haigo ditched formal education for his passion of silent film and became quite successful as a theater narrator. However, when Taki started pushing silent films out of the business, Haigo fell into a deep depression and took his own life. A lot of people say that one of Akira's main drives in his career was trying to accomplish his brother's dreams. Kurosawa was a director who maintained an intimate relationship with death and destruction. When Haigo took Akira to the wreckage of the Great Kanto earthquake in 1923, Akira was only 13 years old. Akira wanted to run away from it all, seeing animal and human bodies lying in the street, but Haigo forbade it. Kurosawa was never one to pull his punches in terms of graphic violence. He maintained that being an artist means never having to avert one's eyes, something that Haigo taught him. Boy, this close up got real dark real fast. It gets better. Right, Adam? Oh, jeez. Kurosawa truly couldn't have picked a worse time to get into the film business. About the same time he started making pictures, Emperor Hirohito started making machine guns, and he needed motivated troops to man them. This meant, like in practically every other country in the war, Japan's film industry turned into its propaganda industry. Kurosawa's entrance put him under the microscope in a very negative way. His first film, Sanshiro Sugata, a sports flick about a judo practitioner, was well liked by most critics, but the wartime government was not so impressed. He was considered a Western European sympathizer, and he turned the sequel, Zoku Sanshiro Sugata, into a propaganda film in order to soothe relations. When Americans started to win the war in the Pacific and occupied Japan, things did a 180 degree turn. Suddenly, Kurosawa was seen by the American censors as a dangerous nationalist, and the US officials proved just as difficult as their Japanese counterparts. However, it wasn't all bad, as the occupation of Japan was fundamental in introducing the Japanese to Western culture and vice versa. This led to Kurosawa's breakout hit, Drunken Angel, which was a gritty, Hollywood-esque drama about a doctor trying to save the life of a dying gangster. The film not only cemented Kurosawa as a competent director, but made stars out of the wise and level-headed Takashi Shimura and the wild and crazy Toshiro Mifune, who would appear together in countless Kurosawa classics for years to come. Aw, they're a perfect couple, just like you and I. Right, Adam? Right, pal? Huh? Go interrupt Alessandra's episode. Samurai Code, Adam Sun.
the 50s became a renaissance decade for Kurosawa. Starting with the crime drama, psychological thriller, samurai flick Rashomon, and the introspective Ikiru, Kurosawa mesmerized audiences with grim settings mixed with motivational wisdom and hope for humanity. He immediately followed these quote-unquote uplifting movies with Shishinin no Samurai, a tale which serves as a warning to would-be heroes that some humans just aren't worth saving. At this point, Kurosawa wasn't just a famous director in Japan, but his films were gaining clout everywhere. Spaghetti Western master Sergio Leone loved the ultra-cool Yojimbo and Sanjiro so much, he used them as the source material for his Dowers trilogy. <laughs> Even famous Hollywood directors got in on the action. George Lucas heavily drew from Kurosawa's The Hidden Fortress in the writing process of Star Wars. Hey, I know that one. The Godfather's helmsman, Francis Ford Coppola, became a huge samurai film nerd. Lucas and Coppola eventually would team up to help fund Kagamusha, one of Kurosawa's best which focuses on a king's body double who has to become the real deal. The development behind Kagamusha was an interesting story in and of itself, since Kurosawa's main focus throughout the production was on his next film, Ron. In fact, during the shooting of Kagamusha, Kurosawa was secretly doing location scouting for Ron on the side. Ron was an adaptation of King Lear, set in, you guessed it, feudal Japan. It was a highly ambitious project. The film looked like a moving painting, with each of the main characters getting their own color palette. Kurosawa poured his heart, soul, and more than anything, the money of Toho Films into the making of Ron. Never quite getting the respect it deserved, the movie sizzled out at the box office and Kurosawa spun into a depression. It went so far that Akira followed in his brother's footsteps a little too closely and attempted suicide. Luckily, he survived. And we not only got to see him return, but also see the emergence of the next generation of Kurosawas. His son Hisao helped produce his later films, and his daughter Kazuko is an award-winning costume designer. They worked as a family on Rhapsody in August, Madadayo, and After the Rain. Akira Kurosawa's life was a strange but fulfilling mix. It was a passionate one filled with tragedy and bloodshed, but was certainly not without a pinch of silver linings. That's a wrap for this week, folks. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Twitter for all sorts of great info on today's most talented media moguls. Now you've got to tune in next week when we report on Canada's secret comedic weapon, Rick Mercer. Let's not forget about this week's trivia question. It's not only Akira's children that are talented in cinema, but his wife as well. Tell us who she is and where they met for a chance to get a shout out on Twitter. Tweet your answers to @outofframetv or write a comment below the video. Mina-san, sayonara.